Oh, grade 12 in today's lesson we're going to be doing organic chemistry the rules of nomenclature for hydrocarbons and let's begin so we have meth meth for one carbon eth for two carbons prop three carbons but four carbons pent five carbons hex six carbons hept seven carbons and oct eight carbons so basically into yens ayola is that you find the longest chain right then when you have the longest chain you're gonna identify how many carbons are there so if your longest chain has about five carbons then you're gonna have to say pent right then uh, obviously you're gonna check the homologous series in which it belongs in yin so let's say it belongs in the alkane then you're gonna have your name as pentane right so let's look at the examples here sinomethane and we can see this one why is it methane because it's in a carbon a1 right so this is one carbon it's meth and then in from what it belongs in the alkane group homologous series right then uh, so synomethane and then here we have two carbons we can see that it still be it belongs with alkane so we have ethane and then this one synadry carbons we it belongs in the alkane we say propane right so let's move then see the naming of compounds with branches so when there's a branch now you say okay methyl branch with one carbon atom ethyl branch with two carbon atoms propyl branch with three carbon atoms so here you can see that we have methane right so if we are to make it a branch or a side chain then we have to remove that h right so when we remove that h it now becomes what methyl so simply what you do is you take the prefix here meth and then you add ubani yl then that's how it becomes that so you say ethane so you remove this h it becomes bani ethyl sinopropane here you remove this h it becomes a branch gubayini propyl and then here you have what um butane you remove that h it becomes bani butyl so all these are known as what the alkyl groups right so these are your branch chains that you see and uh, when we are drawing we say that what the alkyl groups then cinema rules of nomenclature for your IUPAC. so every time when you are giving an IUPAC name this is the basic structure that you are following the prefix meaning which the, the 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 beginning of your word will always tell us where are the substituents what is the position of the substituent so if a lawyer called the alkyl group in this case if your alkyl group is happening in carbon number two that means now you have two dash bunny methyl if it's a methyl um, group so you have two dash methyl then the parent will tell us how many carbons the how many carbons you'll get it from where from counting uh, how many carbons are there in the longest chain so first you have to identify that longest chain then that parent will tell you okay if there are five carbons you say pent and then a suffix the suffix will tell us what family what functional group what homologous series does it belong in right so if it belongs in the alkane homologous series now you have for example two dash methyl um pentane right two dash methyl pentane that could be a name so our prefix two dash methyl told us we tell our substituent that will be the alkyl group then who pen to us to with how many carbons are there there are five pen for five and then we in the suffix told us what functional group what family what homologous series right then they say if two or more identical substituents are present use one of the multiplier prefixes now there is a case whereby you find we there are more than one uh, there are more than one uh, alkyl groups or more than one substituent then that's where you will use um the multiplier prefixes whereby if there is two you will say die so if there are two um let's say two alkyl groups or two methyl groups you say dimethyl but first you have to indicate the positions in which they okay let's say we have a methyl group in carbon number two and another metal group in carbon number four so you will say two four dash di methyl right so you're gonna separate the numbers with your semicolon then we're gonna do that as we proceed with the examples um here we have the rules of nomenclature it says nomenclature of branch chain alkanes the iupac 
So first thing, we must locate the longest continuous chain of carbons. This is the parent chain, right? So the first thing that you do when you are given that, you want to come up with the IUPAC name, right? So you must first um, count the number of the longest chain, right? You must first identify the longest chain, and then there will be the parent chain. There will be the one that tells us what family, what homologous series does it belong in right then the number the longest chain beginning with the end of the chain nearer the substituent so when you number you must number from where um, it is closest to the functional group or where it is closest to the substituent then the final one you say you designate the location of the substituent that is to say you must um you must uh, label or you must position uh, that that uh, disturbance or that substituent that is occurring there. So let's look at this example. Um, we have this one. So if you can follow the blue here, you can see this is our longest chain. You follow the blue, this is our longest chain. How many carbons do we have in the longest chain? It's one, two, three, four, five, six. That tells us that um, it's hexane, right? How do we know that it's hexane? Because it belongs in alkane, then the longest uh, chain has six carbons. So cityene, cityhexane. Now it's time we, we, we want to locate to which ilo, it disturbance here to your okerago carbon number one. So we can see here the substituent is in carbon number two right and then what is this substituent it's an alkyl group what type of alkyl group in methyl so we're gonna say two dash methyl hexane so you can see that this is the prefix lana two dash methyl it tells us what disturbance what substituent was there and then we have hex hex this is our parent which tells us what how many carbons are there and then we have the suffix ain which tells us what this thing belongs in the alkane homologous series then let's look at this one if you follow the blue here we can see what the longest chain here decided to with even journey ibe branch they like that so you must always identify the correct longest chain so you can see See, we see here the longest chain and then we have how many carbons seven carbons right now if we have seven carbons we know hept right from ama prefix way to we know it's hept and then we can see that there are single bonds between these carbon atoms so it belongs in the alkane group obviously there are no double bonds here there are no triple bonds then sibenani seven eight disturbance if you follow this pink here this disturbance is occurring at carbon number three hence we say three methyl three dash methyl heptane right so you can see the same trend here now let's move along so starting with the rules of nomenclature we have step number one or rule number one is you identify the homologous series and the functional group of the organic compound so obviously the functional group when you look at the functional group it should tell us in which homologous series does this compound belong in now if we check here we can see the single bonds between the carbon atoms which means right then that means which we have identified the homologous series it belongs where in the alkane homologous series now number two we want to find the longest carbon chain and number the carbon atoms we have to start from the side that is closest to the functional group the alkyl, the alkyl group or the substituent now since we have identified this longest chain i have highlighted this longest chain where are we going to start counting we cannot start counting from this side right we cannot start counting from this side here why because it is farthest away from any from the disturbance or the substituent so that means with our numbering has to start from this side this is carbon number one two three four five six right then where is the disturbance occurring it's occurring where at carbon number two so we move to number three it says look at the position of the substituent count the number of carbon atoms in the substituent determine the prefix and end it with yl in this case because we have an alkyl group right so now that we have identified number one which this one is an alkane and we have counted here the longest chain and found that there's six carbon hence we have hexane right then it's time we identified which it disturbance or kera group or kera at carbon number two so that that means it's over nobody two dash methyl so every time when you bring in the IUPEG name 
always wamele ukale ngani nge substituent, right, the alkyl group. So that's when you're going to have 2 dash methyl hexane. So it's 2 dash methyl hexane, right. Then um, let's look at this one. But in a case where there are two or more branches in a compound, numbering will start from the side with the earliest disturbance, but naming will be in alphabetical order. That is to say, ethyl will come before methyl, and then methyl comes before propyl. So it's saying when we number, yes, we're still going to follow the part of which when we number, we number from where we see the disturbance early, or we see the substituent early. But then when we name here, when we name, we're going to follow the alphabetical order, right? So we can see, for example, here, sinoethyl, lilana, and then sinomethyl. But when we name, we have to first start with the ethyl before singenayaga ethyl because E comes before bani M, right? So let's look at the example more closely. Now, number one, it says identify the homologous series and the functional group of the organic compound. So... Looking at this compound, we can see there are single bonds between the carbon atoms, which means it belongs, in, it belongs in the homologous series alkane, right? So we are good with that one. No double bond, no triple bond, only single bonds between carbon atoms. It's an alkane. Then number two, we find the longest carbon chain and number the carbon atoms, starting from the side closest to the functional group, the substituent or the alkyl group. Now, if we can check here, we can see that if we identify the longest chain, it's one, two, three, four, five. Why are we starting to number from this side? Because it is the, it is the side whereby we have the earliest disturbance. It is the side that is closest to the functional group or the, or the substituents, right? So we number from this side, it's one, two, three, up until five. So that means we have bunny pentane. But we need to first confirm before we can get head over heels, we need to confirm which valid is the longest chain. So we have one, two, three, four, five right that means we would say yes it is the longest chain because even if we are a gob still we have bunny five carbons right so it is very important that you identify the correct uh, longest chain then step number three you look at the position of the substituent count the number of carbon atoms in the substituent determine the prefix and end it with yl now let's see this one so we have identified which this is five i need then let's look at the position in where the disturbance are. We have the first one at carbon number two. What is this? This is a methyl branch, right? Because we can only see one carbon here, right? But there's something else happening with number three. Uh, this is a what? This is an ethyl branch because we can see the two carbons there. So that means our substituents is two dash methyl and bunny three dash ethyl, right? Then now, when we come to the IUPAC name, let's now observe the rule. Remember, we said numbering will start from the side with, uh, that is closest to the disturbance or that is closest to the substituent. Then, but then when we name, when we name, we must follow alphabetical order. Hence, we have three dash ethyl. Even though the first disturbance that we see here is methyl, but because of the alphabetical order rule, we say three dash ethyl dash two dash methyl pentane. So you can see that one E comes before M, right? Nice one. Then let's look at this one. Remember the case where I said sometimes you find that there is more than one alkyl group. Right. So your alkyl group here, how many alkyl groups? If we can check here, if we can say this is the longest chain, our alkyl groups, there are two of them. Then how do we deal with this one? Okay, first one, we identify the homologous series in which this organic compound belongs in. Now, if we check single bonds between all carbon atoms, that means we have what? An alkane. Then we have to identify the longest chain. The longest chain is this one three carbon even if you take it from this side vertically it's also three carbons that means we have what propane then now we want to identify um, the position of the alkyl groups or the substituents so we can see that um, we have an alkyl group specifically the, met the methyl group occurring in the same position and the same carbon atom, carbon number two. So we have a methyl group here 
on top and a, a metal group here bottom right that means here we want to have to indicate the positions in where um we we have this metal group so it's two two then we apply the multiplier um prefix whereby now we can see that there are two metal groups so we need to say dimethyl also note the fact that your your multiplier prefix they have no they they have nothing to do with um the alphabetical order rule right so if you have a d the d there doesn't count it's the m right so you only look at the m so the multiplier prefix do, it does not affect um the the alphabetical order rule then here let's look at this one it says on this one we have an alkene so how do we see that it's an alkene when we look at the functional group here we can see single bonds here but then there's one double bond you only need one double bond to um to confirm that something is alkene so when we are seeing double bonds between carbon atoms we are not seeing with the or we are seeing just um a double bond between two consecutive um carbon atoms it's enough for you to say it's an alkene so this is an alkene because of the double bond between the carbon atoms then we must identify the longest chain so longest chain let's start counting we're going to start counting from this side why from this side because it is the one whereby we have the earliest disturbance whereby the disturbance is occurring early right then from this side you can see the disturbance is occurring at carbon number two so we cannot start counting from this side so here we have one two three four five longest chain even if you say one two three four five still longest chain so our longest chain is what pentene why pentene now because this belongs in alkene so we take the suffix in so it's pent in but we need to indicate the position of the functional group it's not enough to just say pentene we need to show where the double bond is occurring the double bond is occurring in the first carbon so the chain becomes pent one in pent one in now let's identify the position of the alkyl group the alkyl group if we start naming from this side it's one two three four it's happening in carbon number four so that means we have a methyl group on carbon number four because we started counting from the side that is closest to the functional group therefore the branch will be four dash methyl right then naming it all together the iupac name it becomes four dash methyl pent dash one dash in so it's four methyl pent one in right so that's the name thereof thank you guys for watching to get more videos follow my profile on tiktok at science underscore therapy the videos are also available on facebook search science therapy on facebook thank you